Hey everyone, I'm Zeb Khan again and welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, we completed our chat selection list. In this video, we'll finally get to adding new chat messages and we're going to fetch them and we're going to show them on our UI as chat bubbles. So let's get started. Okay, so we'll start off by creating the top area for the messages panel here. This will contain the name and the picture of our currently selected chat. So for this, we'll also need to see which chat is currently selected. So first, let's add a form control for our chat list control. We're going in our home.component.html and for the match selection list, we are going to add a form control. But before that, let's also add a form control component here. So we are going to add a chat list control and we're going to say a new form control. Okay. And then we're going to link it up here. Great. Now, since we gave the value of the chat uh, value as a chat ID in the selection list, the form control value will be the selected chat ID, but we also need the chat object so that we can display the chat name and chat pick here. So let's do a combined latest operator again. So here we are going to declare a new observable selected chat. This would be combined latest uh, and within it, we are going to give two observables. So the first one would be our chat list control dot value changes. Okay. And the second one would be the my chats that we got up from above here. Okay. And then we're going to pipe into it. We'll then use a map operator. And in the map operator, we are going to get two values here. One would be um, the value from the chat list control and the other would be the chats. Now here, the value we get from the selection list is an array of selected IDs. However, since we have set it to multiple false, that means we're going to only get a single item in the array, which will be the first one. So our selected chat ID would be value zero. Uh, so we have our chat list here. All we want here is to find the chat C C dot ID is equals to the first item in the array, which will be the selected chat. Okay. That's just about it. So we've got this um, observable of selected chat. Now let's move in our component here and let's go in our messages area at the bottom. We're going to add a new div here. Let's call it the messages header and la uh, let's add an ngf on it on the selected chat. We're going to use the async pipe and we're going to give it an alias of selected chat. Great. So the first thing we'll do here is to add an image tag. Okay. This image tag will have a source of something similar that we already have. So we are going to do selected chat dot chat pick. So if there is a non empty value here, so we are going to use the same. Otherwise, we are going to use our placeholder value, which is this. And then after that, we are also going to add an H2 tag here in which we are going to just use the selected chat dot chat name. Okay. Okay. Let's first see how this looks like. So we're going to save this. So let's select this. I select this see it's not it's quite unstyled and it spans over the entire page so let's add some styling for it let's go in our css and let's add some styling for messages header okay so we're going to make a display flex first of all so that we uh, get things in a row and we're going to add a margin bottom of eight pixels okay then in the messages messages header image tag we're going to add some styling here so we're going to make the border radius as 50% we're going to make the object fit as cover so that the image covers the whole area a bit of a margin on the right 16 pixels and a specific height so that we can restrict it to that top area let's see how this looks now great so this looks something similar and lastly we're also going to add in the h2 tag margin as zero so here as you can see we need some uh, padding so on the messages uh, section we are going to add a padding of 24 pixels from all sides great this looks great and a bit of a background color would look nice here so we changed our mind regards to the color for the messages area we're going to make this a very slight gray color okay let's see how this looks okay this looks great lastly let's also add a matte divider at the bottom of this so we're going to add a matte divider right after the div here to give a separation from the area at the bottom. Okay. So this looks nice. So now uh, if, we if we switch it to Zen, we are going to get that header. And if we, ch we change it to Hena, we are going to get that header. So with the header working, now we can uh, add the uh, chat area at the bottom. So let's add another div at the bottom. Uh, we'll make this empty at the start and we'll just add a basic chat area class to it and we're going to add a chat area class here this would just have a basic fixed height because we want to keep it fixed and scroll within it 
they're going to give it a, calcul a calculated height of 100 viewport height minus 270 pixels now this i've come about by trial and error so feel free to change it if you want great so uh, just to see whether it is appearing fine let's make the background as white for this mm, great yes we can get this chart area okay also while we are at it let's also add another area at the bottom and uh, let's call it um, let's add an ng template here at the bottom let's call it no messages so when there are no messages this should be displayed and this has basically nothing much except for messages header and it's just going to say messages okay and here we are going to put an else statement else no messages okay let's test this out okay let's make this uh, as h2 again let's make this as h2 great so we see this message and then when we click on it it's going to switch to that so the layout remains the same regardless of whether we have selected something or not great so at the bottom of this now we are left with the input field so let's add a mat form field right after this chat area or rather let's add a div first give it a class name of input area and within it we are going to add a mat form field we're going to make it an appearance of outline inside of it will be an input this will be a mat input and it will have a placeholder of enter your message and then we need a suffix button at the end as well so we're going to add a button here we're going to call it mat icon button this will also be a mat suffix this is going to be at the end of the text field and then in the mat icon within it we are going to give send great let's see how this looks okay we can see this appears fine now let's go to the input area and let's add some styling to it let's first make it with 100 percent or rather input area and mat form field to be 100 percent and let's add a bit of padding above and below so let's add a padding top of 16 pixels and a padding bottom of 8 pixels great so i just i think this uh, layout looks good and I think we have completed the initial messages area layout now. So now that we are done with our layout for the messages area, we can continue to add the core feature of adding a new chat message. So first for that, we are going to add a form control for the message input box as well. Let's call it message control. We're going to go in our home component and let's add a control here called message control equals to new form control. This will be empty at the start. Let's link it up with our input here. We're going to give form control as message control then let's add a send message function in our component now when will this be called this will be called on the click event handler for our button and it will also be called on the key down dot enter event of our input field let's add this handler in our component so we're going to add send message here first we're going to get the current message here we're going to do this dot message control dot value okay then we're going to get the selected chat id we can get that by using the chat list con chat list control dot value and the first one and we'll check here both of them whether both of them are not null if both of them have a value we are going to add the message and then right after that we are going to clear the message control as well so that the user can continue to write another message okay now let's test this out now to see whether it works so let's select henna here and we're going to say hey there and yes the message disappears that means it's going into this if condition and if you don't write anything and we put press enter nothing is going to happen okay so now let's add the main function to add the chat message we're going to go in our chat service and we will add a new function called add chat message okay the inputs to this function will be the chat id in which we want to send the message and then the message itself which is going to be a string and then in the return type we are going to have an observable of any which means that we just want to know whether uh, the message has been added or not the first thing we'll need to do here is to get the reference to the messages sub collection so to do that we are going to use the collection function as before we're going to give this dot fire store as the first parameter and after that we'll need to build the hierarchy from which we can get the messages sub collection so to build that hierarchy we can send in the parameters one by one so for example first we are going to access the chats collection then we want the specific document in the chat so we are going to reference it by the chat id then within the chat document we have our messages sub collection so with this hierarchy we can get the messages sub collection in our specific chat great we also need 
a chat reference here this is going to refer to our chat document because we need to update that as well after we send a message uh, remember we have those fields last message and last message date so let's use the doc function for that and this is going to get this dot fire store as well so after that we are going to first specify the chats uh, collection and then within it we are going to specify the document with the id great so now as before we also need the current user to uh, set the sender id so we'll start with that and we're going to return this dot user service dot current user profile dot pipe uh, and because uh, like before this is a one-time operation and we only need to get the current value of the user we will add take one as well then we are going to add a concat map this concat map is going to get the current user in its parameters and we will use the add doc function as before this is going to go in the reference and for the object we are going to give the data values that we want so the first data value that we need to give is the text value this will be the message that we get from the top. The second will be sender ID. This will be the current user and its ID. Then we have the sent date. Now for the sent date, we need to send in a Firebase timestamp value. Now Firebase provides a timestamp object. So we need to import that in. So to do that, let's first define a today variable. And let's say that we have timestamp here. And let's use from date function for this and create a new date representing the date today and we are going to send this in the sent date great so this is it for the add doc function this is going to add a new chat message but we also need to do one more thing and that is to add another concat map and let's also add an update doc this update doc is going to update the chat uh, document and the values here would be the last message which would be message and the last message date which would be today and i think we are done with this function now let's add this to our component and test it out so let's go our com go back to our component and let's replace this comment with this dot chat service dot add chat message it takes in the selected chat id and the message also don't forget to subscribe to it okay so we're not seeing the messages we'll not be able to see the messages at this point here so what we're going to do we're we going to go and verify these messages from the firebase console okay so it's time to test it all out so we'll add a few messages here in our uh, conversation with Hina. And let's say we say that, hey Hina, how are you? When are you coming to visit? Just some standard messages. And as you can see, as, uh, as soon as we did all of this, we are getting the last message here. It's being updated fine. And uh, we're also getting this date, which is in the form of a timestamp. Uh, at this point, we're going to fix it later, but let's uh, keep it as it is for now. Okay. Uh, so to verify um, at the back end whether we are getting all of our messages correctly, let's go in our um, Firebase console and let's see um, our uh, chat, which is this one. And if we if we go in our chat here, we are going to see that. If we're going to refresh this we can see that we have our messages sub collection here and the message sub collection we can see that this one was this hey hey now and we have the sender id the sent date as it is uh, supposed to be okay great so now we have our messages being stored correctly in the in the correct place in our uh, firestore uh, database and now that we can add new messages to our charts we need to fetch them and show them in our chat area here. So let's create a function to fetch the messages for a chat. Now this would be quite a simple function. So we're going to go in our chat service again and we are going to add a function here called get chat messages. Okay. We're going to add a dollar sign here because uh, we want it to be uh, a real time observable uh, so that it changes uh, uh, or updates data as uh, the data updates on the Firestore end as well. So here we're going to take in the input as a chat ID, okay, because we need the messages for a specific chat and for the return type, we will have the message type which we defined in our, inter uh, which we defined in our model and it will be an array of that, okay. Then the first thing obviously is that we need a reference just like we had uh, in our previous function. We're going to give in this dot Firestore in the start then we're going to give the chat uh, collection first then the chat id and then we're going to give the messages sub collection here uh, we're going to also define a query here um, query all this is going to query on uh, this reference here and instead of a where clause we're going to put in an order by clause here okay so we're going to order our um, messages according to the sent date 
so we are going to do sent date here and we're going to do ascending here we want an ascending order all right and then we are just going to return collection data and query all as observable message array great so now in our component we'll create a messages observable which will contain the messages for the currently selected chat so let's go in our home component here and below the selected chat we are going to or rather let's just define the messages observable here this is going to be this dot chat list control so it's going to start with the change in the chat list and we'll start our observable with this so we are going to do chat list control dot value changes and we will pipe into it okay uh, the first thing we'll do is to get this value and we are going to map it to the first item which will be actually the selected chat id then we will use a switch map and we'll get the chat id in its parameter and then returning this we are going to do this dot chat service dot get chat messages and within it we are going to send the chat id doing it in this way makes it all reactive so that whenever the chat list changes or whenever the uh, the chat messages change everything will be reflected back into the messages observable automatically and onto the ui it's pretty nice isn't it great so let's test this out now uh, by adding a simple div in our home.component template so in our chat area we're going to add a simple div here and we're going to do ng4 is equals to this would be let message of messages dollar async okay and this would be message dot text and let's see right so when we select henna here we are going to get our messages here and if we change for example the chat list control for example we keep it zen the messages disappear because it's all real time and when we select henna we are going to get those messages again so as you can see now we can fetch and display our messages great in the next video we are going to style our chat bubbles properly so they look like a real chat app and we'll also add tweaks such as date formatting i hope you're liking this set of videos they're a bit more complex in the series i've created previously but then you also get a more featured application in the end if you have any comments or queries, do shout out in the section below so I can help out where I can. And be sure to subscribe for my future videos if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.